Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be looking at some Distress um, Oxide sprays um, and testing out what they can do. So I'm working on a cheap canvas that I got. Now this is primed when it comes in the canvas pack, but it's not actually gessoed with anything else. So I'm just starting out with a mixture of the Distress sprays and it's really important that you um, shake them up well before you use them because it's a combination of dye ink and pigment. So um, one, the pigment will settle and it needs to be sort of sprayed in together and um, mixed up. You'll notice when I'm spraying onto this canvas, it's not sinking into the canvas because it is that sort of already primed slightly. Um, and so it's not gonna um, soak into the, the canvas itself. It just sort of sits on top. And the reason I did this is I wanted to see what it did and how it worked. Now as you spray it on, you can see that really vivid, vivid, vivid colour. That's a lot of the dye happening on the top. When it dries, it will get a more matte, almost chalky effect to it. But the good thing I found about working on a canvas is that um, it kept some of that strong colour, which I really liked. Now you can see I've got a lot of overspray on my desk and I wanted to use that up so I had some of these doilies sitting around I just um, sprayed over the overspray with some water and I'm just pressing my doily into it to pick up all the colors it gives you a really sort of soft watercolor effect so I, I don't like wasting stuff you'll actually notice every time I do something on this page I tend to um, use the excess off you could also instead of having my glass media mat that I've got down um, you could use a piece of paper in the background as you spray so you, you spray the paper and then add more because i liked the strong colors i've just gone in with some of the sprays again and sprayed into the background which of course caused some more overspray so i was able to mop it up with some other things one of the things i found when i was working with this is that the colors do layer really well together so particularly if you dry the um, product off first and then layer it on again but you can see how bright and beautiful those colors are so those doilies i'll use in another collage somewhere down the line um, and you know you can cut them up or do something with them i'm sure so you can see it's really lovely and vibrant and you get this um sort of watercolor effect now you can stamp over the top of this to do anything you wanted with it the sprays are water reactive, so if you spray water on them again, it will reactivate, so just be aware of that. It does give some really cool oxide impressions, you sort of get these white spots and bleach spots on it, um, but they're not um, permanent when they dry. So I'm just going in with my canvas, I left it aside to dry and it still hasn't dried, it takes a little while on the canvas, on paper it dries a lot quicker than that. Um, but you can see those cool little spots that you get on it. So I just use some tape, paper towel over the top to um, sponge off the background. Now I'm just going in with some more of the sprays because I knew I wanted to add some butterflies to and flowers to my canvas. That was my sort of aim when I was doing this. Now you notice if you um, spray directly on the page, you sort of get that halo effect. If you spray at a slight angle, you'll get... Um, a larger spray and it'll be a little bit more um, opaque so it's just playing around with how you spray you'll notice also that the oxides will act a little bit differently on this page because it's obviously not got any primer on it so it soaks into the fiber of the paper and again I'm just heating it up just as it dries so it will matte down, you will lose that really bright colour, you'll get a more chalky finish, but it works really well together. Now, I had a choice of some of the colours I wanted to go for. I really love the bright colours, so I think this Wilted Violet, Mermaid Lagoon, Cracked Pistachio, Spiced Marmalade and uh, Honey Am, no, Fossilised Amber were the colours that I'm using in this palette and they all work really, really well together. Usually when I'm working with dye sprays, I wouldn't even consider spraying all those colours, warms and cools on together because I knew it would make mud. But with this, they sort of stay separate and stay, do their own thing. Um, you can spray them on really, really heavily and get a really opaque finish 
or you can spray them on quite lightly and you can still see the text through. So I wanted to try a few different things, splots and splatters and tr some areas like the top left hand corner are quite opaque whereas other areas like the bottom right hand corner are quite um, fine mists. I'm just using an archival ink or a um, Versafine ink which is permanent ink to stamp my butterflies. I think this butterfly was from Dark Green Doors and I saved you me fussy cutting them out so I just fussy cut them all out, just left a little border around them when I was finished. Now I'm using some flower stamps from Carabelle Studios, this is one of their new releases and I'm just stamping it onto the Tim Holtz clear or plain tissue collage tissue. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I know that the background is water activated. If I glued these straight down onto the background or use gel medium like I usually do, um, it would just smear and mix the colours and I didn't want that to happen. So I thought if I stamp it onto the paper and apply the adhesive to the paper, I could then glue it on and not have that smearing happening. Now obviously if I was working directly onto paper I could just stamp these images over the top it wouldn't be an issue but because stamping on a canvas you've got that um, raised edge and then the canvas you don't have anything hard to press up against so you don't tend to get a great stamped impression. So this is a good way to get around stamping on unusual surfaces or surfaces have got lumps and bumps on them. I'm just going around my collage tissue with some water to help tear it out. I find when I'm using tissue paper that a torn edge helps it blend in more naturally with the whatever you're gluing it down on. If you've got a cut edge it tends to give you a really definite this was put onto the page look whereas you can kind of get away with it a little bit more when it's got a torn edge it looks a little bit more natural. So all I'm doing now is just having a bit of a play around with my placement of where I want these flowers to go to make sure it's balanced. You can see on the bottom flower some of that blues come through, it wasn't quite dry. Um, but that's okay because what's going to happen when I put the gel medium on is it's obviously going to reactivate the ink underneath or the spray underneath and it actually tints the collage medium so that it makes it look a little bit more translucent, it tints the paper for you. So it's a, a really sort of clever way to um, get the two melded together. Now it looks clear and cloudy there, oops, and I tore my page because I was a bit rough with it. Um, but when it dries, the gel medium dries clear, so you don't need to worry about um, that. It will dry clear when it's finished. Um, when I'm gluing this down, I'm trying to be really, really careful not to put my paintbrush onto the surface of my canvas because I know if I do that I will pick up some of that ink um, or reactivate the ink and it will stain over what I'm doing. So just be aware as you're working, you just need to be a little bit careful with this and again if it was a flat surface it would be so much easier just to stamp straight onto it, you could sort of avoid this. Um, usually when you collage on top of something you tend to put a uh, coat of matte medium over the top as well uh, but in this, case, uh, in this case I was able to do some of that but not as much as I would have liked to have done. So I'm doing the same with butterflies and gluing those down, gluing them down around the edges. I'm not worrying about putting any gel medium over the top of the butterflies because again that's the distress spray colouring it. So if I put the gel medium over the top, it would reactivate it all. You can see now on the flowers how they've changed colours slightly and that's because the ink or the spray from underneath has reactivated and stained that paper through the gel medium. So you get a really cool effect. I'm just using my Posca paint pens to go around and sort of do some doodly borders around my flowers just to make them sort of stand out a bit. Sorry, it's not my Posca paint pen, it's an ink pen. And the reason I chose an ink pen was because I wanted to do this. I wanted to have some ink dripping down my page to create my stems of my flowers. Now the ink pen I used isn't a true black. It's actually sort of a grey a gray back colour. Um, so it's not as stark on the page, which is the effect I wanted. Um, particularly for the um, stems, because if you had a really black line come down, it would just look a bit too much. 
So now I'm going in with Posca paint pens with a white pen just to add some highlights and some doodly borders over the top. So using the stamped image basically as an outline and then adding some different bits and pieces just to add in some brightness back to the page and a little bit of extra detail. I like when I'm doing canvases or even in my art journals to add something drawn by me even if it's tracing over the top of a stamped image just so the piece of work has the hand of the artist so to speak on the page rather than just being all stamped images. So even with the butterflies though that's a beautiful stamp I'm just again going around the outside just to sort of add some extra details and when I was fussy cutting them I did cut off the antenna so I'm just drawing those back in again. One of my tricks for doing sort of sketchy lines is that if you do two, um, it makes it look deliberate. So if you do one and it's a bit wonky, it looks like you've drawn it wonky. If you do two, it looks like you've actually been very deliberate in being random with your um, effects. So I'm just going in with a black marker as well just to add some extra lines to my flowers and finish off my piece. When I finished, I signed my canvas. So here's a close up of the finished page. I loved using the distress um, sprays on this project. It was a really cool effect, and it got by using them on the butterflies and on the canvas gave me lots of different effects. So I do hope you try them out. They're lots of fun to play with. And until next time, bye for now.